mission district training. We are going to be splitting it over a number of weeks because the topic of foundation is just so onerous and we couldn't do it just try and do everything in one training session. So this morning, we're starting with Polio Plus, um, a topic that's um, probably on the top of everybody's mind, considering that we've just been declared um, polio free. So without further ado, I would just like to introduce you to my team. And for those that don't know me, I am Grace Van Sale. I'm the centennial president for the Rotary Club of Johannesburg and also the District Polio Plus Chair. But I have an amazing, amazing team that I have surrounded myself with, and they are just phenomenal. So I'm going to start by introducing them. Firstly, we've got Dr. Stella Anyangwe, our district governor-elect. Then we have Emmanuel Gamor. He is from the Rotary Club of Accra in Ghana, so not even from our district, but he's serving on this district um, portfolio. <laughs> then we've got Monica K Kiwanuka, the past president of Rotary Club Johannesburg North Central. And we have Christine Malata, Rotarian from um, Northcliffe, and she is also our district in chair. So it's just amazing to have these guys on, on the team. So what I'd like to do next is, obviously, <coughs> polio has been around in, in the Rotary world for quite a few decades where we all know we've had this campaign for polio now. And for many of us, it, it is, we don't know what polio is because in South Africa, we've been very, very fortunate that our government made it mandatory that you are um, vaccinated against polio. A lot of people in South Africa do not know the burden of, of, that we've taken from for polio and what we as Rotary have gone through to actually get to a stage where we have almost eradicated polio from the face of the earth. So I'm going to show you this. I'm just going to stop my screen share quickly because I'm sure I didn't do it properly and you're not going to get the sound. So I just want to take you back in. Apologies for all the technical issues. And I'm going to show you this video. <laughs> Dangerous illness is to everyone in these future songs. Can everybody please just mute themselves? Everybody knows that um, in August, we had a major, major celebration where Nigeria was declared polio free, which meant that Africa was. But DGE Stella, please take us through this exciting <coughs> occasion. Thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Grace, and uh, good morning to all our uh, participants. Yes. 
Africa has been certified wild polio free. There is a certification commission set up by the World Health Organization. And this certification commission has been on for 20 years. And on the 21st of August, you can see that certificate on the left. This commission concluded that with Nigeria having been declared wild polio free, all 47 countries of the WHO African region are now wild polio free. Please remember that Africa has 54 countries, but for WHO, the 47 countries south of the Sahara are one region and we are all now wild polio free. Um, this, uh, the, the, the huge celebration that Grace was talking about took place in Nigeria on the 29th of August and there our international RI president and others took to the stage to all appreciate what all of us have done. I need to remind us all that it is important that we still have a clear understanding of the different types of polio infection. We are now wild polio free. It does not mean that polio has been eradicated from the earth, uh, not yet. So we still need to go ahead, countries need to go ahead, surveillance with vaccination to ensure that end polio, which is the low slogan now, becomes a reality. Thank you. Thank you very much, DG Stella. Um, but like I alluded to earlier, a lot of us in South Africa, especially our youth, don't know what polio is. It's a disease that they've heard of and that isn't really affecting us. So Monica, would you please take us through on what polio is? Thank you very much, Grace, and good morning to everyone. Um, poliomyelitis, also as what we know as polio, is a highly contagious disease. It's caused by an infectious virus that attacks the nervous system. The polio virus enters the body through the mouth and is spread through contact with the stools of an infected person and or water contaminated with stool of an infected person. Children under five, the children under five are specifically uh, most likely to contract polio. Important to note is that 95 to 99% of those infected with the polio virus have no symptoms, but can still spread the virus and infect others. And so following the incub an incubation of a period of about one to 10 days, about 24% of those infected develop non-paralytic poliomyelitis. This is with mild flu-like symptoms, we all know those by now, and include fevers, headache, sore throat, vomiting, fatigue, and many others. And about 1%, 1% of poliomyelitis cases can develop into paralytic polio. This leads to paralysis of the spinal cord, also known as spinal polio, brainstem, also known as vulvar polio, or both. The signs include loss of left reflexes, severe muscle spasms, floppy and all deformed limbs, hips, ankles, or feet, and sudden paralysis. In 5 to 10% of polio paralysis cases, the virus will attack the muscles that help in breathing and may even cause death. However, it's also possible for polio to return 15 to 40 years after recovery. This is also known as the post-polio syndrome. So pregnant women, younger children, and persons with suppressed immune systems are, are mostly at risk. The good news is that polio is preventable. All that needs to be done is to vaccinate children at an early stage according to the schedule. Two months, one dose. Four months, one dose. Six to 18 months, one dose. And four to six years, a booster dose. Thank you. Grace, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you, Butch. 
So thank you, Monica, for that. I'd like to um, hand over to Emmanuel, who recently, well, two days ago, interviewed Rotarian Jim Lewis, um, who is a polio survivor. And the interview was 30 minutes long, so we couldn't give you that whole interview, but we will share it on social media. But we just took a snippet out for what does it mean as you, for you as a Rotarian. So over to you, Emmanuel. I hope you're online. Yes, I am. I've, I've been following, and it's good to be here with everybody as well. Um, Rotarian James Jim Lois joined uh, Rotary Club of Simi Sunrise in 2001, so he's been a Rotarian for almost two decades. Um, he's had an illustrious career serving in many capacities at the local district and foundation level. Um, he is a polio survivor, contracting polio at a young age um, when he was between five and six with his young brother. And he shares in the video um, his entire journey and lifelong journey uh, being an advocate for polio. And also, um, as you would share shortly, uh, his views on vaccination. In uh, 2017, he was um, awarded the International Service Award for Polio Free World at the RI Convention in Atlanta. Um, he is a teacher. He's been a high school teacher uh, most of his career. Um, and he is such an amazing, wonderful, um, not only testimony of going through a, a dilapidating di uh, disease uh, and, being, and surviving, but he's a great and amazing um, kind of like a role model for us Rotarians as well. So without much ado, uh, Rotarian Jim, you can go ahead and share the snippets for the rest of the team. One of the questions that came up that a lot of folks want to ask is, okay. um, typically when you meet somebody who survived having polio, how do, how do you relate to it? How is the most empathetic way to support folks? Um, I think a lot of us speak about different um, areas of interest that, that Rotary goes into, but having such, I think you mentioned something like this, a good friend from my my club in Accra, Rotarian Edison, is also a polio survivor, and he's such an overachiever, and he always kind of leads the way in how he wants us um, to treat to treat him and to treat the topic of polio when we do awareness. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to learn from you what are the successful ways of engaging with people as well. That's a great question, and let me say this. Um, we learn to live with the disease, to move our bodies, to be able to move our bodies with the muscles we have. And there are some individuals that have had polio, that are polio survivors, that are in much worse shape than I was. I mean, I've seen pictures and seen children and adults that are crawlers in the streets. They're on their belly crawling. They might be begging. This is unacceptable. If the muscles are atrophied and they die, they're not going to come back. There are corrective surgeries like I had that'll help them. And we need to do this in South Africa. I'm going to help you with post polio and polio corrective surgeries and things we can do. And I'll bring that up when we have our meeting. But uh, yeah, we understand it. We understand that you just can't move if you don't have the muscles. And so therefore, you, you have to understand also that this, this paralysis and this disease, because we're such overachievers and we're trying to do everything that everybody else is doing, oh. that we kind of wear ourselves out. <clears throat> oh. And this is a lifelong disease, Emmanuel. This is not, not something that's going to be here like a co cold or the flu, and then you're going to get rid of it. No. It's, uh, in a way, it's a little bit like COVID. You know, you've had it. Most people are going to recover. There are those that don't. Many of those have other circumstances. But anyway, we don't know for sure what the long-term effects are going to be. But if you see someone that had polio, mm. then you can identify with them. Absolutely. And you can say, I, I understand what's going on. I want to help you. You're, I'm a Rotarian. I can help you. 
one of the questions that Thank you, Emmanuel. That was an awesome interview. Um, and as we said, we'll share that full interview for you on our social media platforms and also send the link out to you. But having gone through this journey and, and having spoken to survivors like Jim, we have a lot of challenges um, in fighting this disease and to eradicate it totally from the face of the earth. I'd like to call on Christine to go through some of these challenges that we, we face as Rotary. Christine, are you there? Hi, morning everyone. Thank you all for joining. So glad to have you. So um, as Grace mentioned, we do have a lot of challenges and one of the first one is obviously the anti-vaccine movement that has been around since 1763, where there was little trust in the doctors, vaccine or hygiene on how vaccines were administered. Although we have come a long way, vaccines are still questioned and other diseases symptoms are blamed on vaccine. In most instances, papers have been published proving this to be incorrect, i.e. issues on the disease on autism. So um, the next one would be, but what about COVID-19? Um, like he mentioned, Jim, he did say that it, would, does, it is similar to COVID in the sense that you do recover. So many may feel, why are we putting funding into COVID as polio is almost eradicated? Why, many may feel, why are we not putting funding into COVID as polio is almost eradicated? But the problem is that polio, the polio plus infrastructure has been used for track and trace of COVID patients. The polio fund contributes $5 million to assist with COVID. As the name says, Polio Plus, it would be used for other pandemics and ETC. Um, the third challenge would be um, limited, limited fundraising. COVID has put a strain on the club's ability to raise funds from a financial and social distancing perspective. As most people know, with the borders being closed, the economy has been hit very hard. The second, I mean, the fourth, Fifth, sorry, the fifth um, challenge will be club, club contributions to the Rotary Foundation. Club contri contributions to the Rotary Foundation have decreased over the past few years, which means the district receives less, less district designated funds, which affects the district's ability to contribute to Polio Plus. And then the last challenge that we found was the club contributions to Polio Plus. Although the table, as you can see, Although the table shows an average contribution per club, only about 35% of our clubs contribute to Polio Plus. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Christine. So given those challenges, what is it that you and your clubs can do? Whether you're an Interact club, whether you're a Rotaract club, we have some of those clubs online with us, or a Rotary club. So the first thing I think you could do is to create awareness around polio. You are very welcome to reach out to any one of our Polio Plus committee people to come and address your club on the subject. We have an archive full of videos and information and we can really um, give your club members an interesting talk around um, polio and what it is and why it's important. The second thing is involve your, involve your interact clubs, involve your early act, Rota, Rota Kids clubs. This is the generation that has probably never ever heard of polio and they are future. And if we are gonna keep polio at zero, it is very important that they understand this disease and that they understand the importance of vaccination. So involve your Rota Act clubs, do a fundraiser, do a, a polio awareness campaign with them. And we're going to put a challenge out for every single club to contribute a minimum of 2000 Rand to the Polio Plus funds. So if we look at, if only 35% of our clubs have contributed, um, as per the, the table that you saw in the previous slide, if we get the other 65% of our clubs to just put 2000 Rand in, we can really, really raise a lot of money 
um, and, and actually make a substantial difference. My calculations show if clubs contribute at the current level, the clubs that have been contributing, and we get the rest of the clubs to just put in 2,000 Rand, we can raise 1.5 million Rand for Polio Plus this year, just from clubs. Now, you might also say, well, that's great, but you know, we've got fundraisers and we've got other projects, and how do we actually give Polio Plus 2,000 Rand? So I'm going to call on Janine Talyart from the Rotary Club of White River to come and tell us a little bit about what they do at their club. Janine, are you online? I am. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. I'm yes. hoping you have some of our pictures there. You do. Wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. In the White River Club, about 10 years ago, um, one of the members decided to buy one of those crazy plastic pigs and um, ask people just to put money in it for polio. Um, as is anything with a cash collection box, they don't do too well if they're just hanging around. Then Joan Finsale joined um, the White River Club. Some of you may remember her um, from the Nelspreg Club prior and her husband who was very involved in polio, especially in Mozambique, um, 10 plus years ago. And she decided to name the pigs. So you can see some of them here. We had um, Pretty Belinda, you can see Charlie Chaplin up there with his hat. Um, we've had Marilyn Monroe, um, Frida, all sorts of things. And what happens with this pig is you have to, anything you're excited or happy about, the pig needs cash money for. So silly, silly examples, anything from your grandchildren visited to the week for the weekend to um, you got safely home, anything and Joan has advocated it in a big way and at every single club meeting there's a five minute um, allowance for the pig whichever one it currently is to come out and for people to put money in and um, you can see on the right hand side there with Mike he was Dr. Mike was also very involved with polio and he's quite um, passionate about it and he gets to slaughter the pig every single year and take out all the insides. And um, we've had some pretty amazing years. I think um, we've raised between 10 to 17,000 rand a year for polio just on the polio pig, Frida pig or pretty Belinda, whoever the year is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, very, thank you very much, um, Janine. That is such an awesome idea. And I know that Benoni Aurora is online and Butch is, um, advocates a happy slot at his club. So Butch, that's a great idea for you to raise um, some money for polio. But what are we doing as a district to help you involve your youth? So I'm going to hand over to Christine again, and she's going to take you through the ideas that we have. Christine? Uh, Hi, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, hi again. Um, so like Grace said, one of the major things we believe is um, involving the interacts and the early acts. So they can and should <laughs> encourage um, raise awareness and for polio. So what we came up with were two, were two competitions. So the early acts, the early acts coloring competition where they stand a chance to win 500 Rand for their club. So they will be draw they will have three drawing templates available. So the posters are here. Uh, we did send them out, but we will send them out again on Monday, just as a reminder. And interact awareness as well. The second competition is interact awareness, where we are encouraging clubs who have interact clubs to raise awareness and join the competition where they stand a chance to win a thousand rand for their club. So the campaign can come in different forms. It can be a poster, it can be an essay, it can be a video, debate, interview, anything that is, will be sent on raising awareness. All this, um, both competitions will end on the 31st of October. 
So we do encourage, and again, <laughs> strongly encourage, that the Interact Clubs do join. Uh, we will send out another reminder on Monday just to basically remind people that we do have a competition going and there is an opportunity for their clubs to join. Thanks, Grace. Thanks, Christine. Okay, so on 24th of October is World Polio Day. And we have not forgotten about Rotary Clubs and Rotary Act Clubs as well. So there's a chance for you to win some money. So what the district has done is we have put together a Zumba Beginners online class for the 24th of October, World Polio Day. It will start at 10 a.m. Um, and it's open to Rotarians, Rotary Clubs, Rotary Actors, um, members of the public. We're going to put a campaign out on this. The tickets are 200 Rand per person to enter. We're going to have spot prizes for the best enthusiasm, the best dress. Um, there's going to be various prizes. And then the Rotary Club or Rotary Act Club that brings along the most participants will win a thousand Rand as well that they can add to their 2000 Rand um, contribution to polio. We do have a system in place to be able to track which clubs um, are bringing the participants. So when you register, when you click on the link, it asks, are you a Rotarian? And it asks from which Rotary Club you are. So I hope that you're all going to support us in this amazing um, opportunity. We stand to raise 100,000 Rand if we sell 500 tickets, which will be an amazing contribution from our district for Polio Plus. That is basically what we have for you as a training session. So I'm going to hand over to Emmanuel to deal with any questions. Emmanuel? Of course. Hey, so if there are any questions, there's a wonderful Polio Plus committee team that we can um, be able to answer. I think there have been quite a few of the questions in the chat. I see that DGE Stella has been, Dr. Stella has been busy. Um, kind of filling in that gap and responding to some of them as well. Um, I think that the the main question was the difference between the wild poliovirus and, and the poliovirus in itself. Dr. Stella has been has shared some. I don't see any other questions. Uh, Emmanuel, if, I'm, if I may just add to that, somebody asked a question, what's the difference between wild poliovirus and vaccine-derived uh, polio, uh, because yes. this is what this this is the, the the what's going around in social circles. Everybody's asking. Like we said before, the fact that wild polio virus has been eradicated doesn't mean polio has ended. There are other types of polio uh, viruses, and the thing is, the polio vaccines, the two at least that are mainly used, are different. One is an inactivated vaccine, which is live viruses, but their potency reduced. And another is a killed vaccine, I mean, killed virus, so the virus is not alive. Of course, it makes sense to understand that with the vaccine which uses live virus, even though the virus has been inactivated, there's a risk that people whose immunity is low people who are not very immune might, and I say might because the proportion is very, very small, might contract polio from the vaccine. And the same week when Africa was declared wild polio free, in South Sudan, there was a whole number of cases of vaccine derived polio. So people came out and said, oh, you said polio are gone. Look at this polio. Polio is not gone yet and it's only continued vaccination and surveillance that will eradicate polio from the face of the earth. That's it. Thank you so much, DG. Um, in my conversation with Jim, he also mentioned a bit about that and the fact that muscle atrophy and others is, is the full-fledged polio, not um, the small version of, of the vaccine that's given to folks in order to build antibodies. And so he did make the distinction between um, having the vaccine that introduces a smaller version in order to, to help you fight it rather than contracting it. And then the subsequently, the, subsequently the muscle atrophy that causes eventual paralysis. Um, I think the, the question that Janine from White River was asking about paralysis and serious effects um, that may be derived from the vaccine 
And I think that DGD answered, uh, but if you have any other questions, uh, comments to add to that, I would appreciate that as well. Folks, you could continue to leave your comments in the chats as well um, and, and raise your hand. I think that we'll be able to see if you have further questions. Thank you, Emmanuel. We're going to be sending you to some breakout rooms now, and I need you just to bear with me for, for a, a while. So as I'm allocating you, I will open the room and move you to breakout rooms. So we've got four facilitators that will be in each breakout room. The first breakout room is going to be facilitated by Monica. And the, the question is, you have to plan a polio awareness day as well as raise money to contribute to polio. How and what do you do? The second facilitator is Christine and her topic is, you are an interact club that has never heard of polio. You are asked to put an awareness campaign together. How do you get your members and school excited to support this cause and what do you plan on doing? The third room is gonna be facilitated by Emmanuel. And this one is your social circle is against vaccinations. How do you as a Rotarian approach the importance of vaccinations, especially in respect of polio? The fourth room is going to be facilitated by District Governor, Stella, uh, District Governor elect Stella. And her topic is your club members do not believe that you should make a contribution to Polio Plus as you feel COVID is more important. How do you convince them otherwise? Okay, so, so really some meaty topics. And I'm going to open these rooms and this, are you not able to accept the um, breakout room? We were asked um, to plan something for, for, uh, for, the, for the polio uh, campaign and to, and to raise money and how would we do that. So one suggestion was there are different methods to inform people firstly about polio and the polio day. And that can be done by social media, uh, engaging radio stations, newspapers, etc. Anything that's that uh, is available to us to use, and one could set up something to donate into an account, um, kind of more like a pledge. Then one uh, member from Botswana, I did unfortunately couldn't hear him very well, but uh, he, he said something approaching the Ministry of Health. Uh, the uh, one challenge is, of course, to convince people uh, to donate and actually <laughs> quite a few of them one needs to explain what polio is. And one area that is still probably with us for some time, even if we remain polio free, is, uh, you know, post polio surgery, for example. And the next thing is, of course, the, the vaccinations need to continue and money will be needed always to continue that. Um, we could go, for example, to a shopping center and, and set up with, a, with, you know, a club could set up a, a stall or something and just stop people, talk to them, ask them to um, donate a little bit of money. The next thing is one could do a quiz uh, with different clubs, for example, or people from the public who knows. Uh, different teams and raise money uh, through the quiz for uh, for polio. Then at any meeting, the sergeant of arms could ask, uh, you know, could find members and the money that goes into the box will be collected for polio, uh, to raise money for polio. And as we understood, the money goes into the Polio Plus campaign um, you know, international campaign uh, by Rotary. Uh, that's you. kind of what we came up with. Thank you very much, Sips. Um, I'm, I hope I'm getting it right because I see it says Sips. So Are you all there? Going to call you <laughs> Sips. <laughs> yeah. thank you so I'm much here. <laughs> we we're going to run some polls while this is going to while you are giving feedback. 
but um, for some reason our meeting hasn't been set up to allow me to do any polls. So oh, I'm just going to give you a question and I want you in the chat box to give me the right answer, please. And if I could ask DGS Estella to um, monitor the chat box for us, please. So the first um, okay. poll is what is polio? A, so you've got to say A, B or C is the answer, okay? A, it's a type of sport. B, it's an infectious virus or C, it's a brand of clothing. So I'm going to let you give us the answers there. And then I want Christine to tell me who's doing report back on their side. Hi, so we had a minor, uh, because they, they were, we spoke so much on great ideas. I forgot to ask someone to do a report back. So I'll just report back. <laughs> but we, um, we did get a lot of engagement and um, I'm supposed to reach out to one of the St. Stithians. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, one of uh, that club because they're very eager to have someone to come and talk, talk to them about it. So we will engage one-to-one um, -one after this. Uh, I will send them my email address. So Shirley from Midran gave us a great idea on how um, about 15 years ago, I think that's what she said, um, they had a competition with one of the with one of their interact clubs and where they reached out to they reached um, they got a sponsor with Toyota so the idea was that they encouraged their clubs the interact clubs to have drawings essays on a topic based on the the, the rotary theme for that year so basically um, they encouraged them to have essays or drawings and then once the competition was done and everyone handed in their work um, they asked Toyota to sponsor the first, second, and third prize. So they partnered with them as well as Johnson & Johnson. So she did encourage that it's best to work with people in your community or companies in your community so that it's easier to engage and they understand how it works for them on their CSR. So um, after they, they got all their work done, they ended up publishing their, the, the essays and the drawings and sold it to the parents. So each parent, obviously, because it's sentimental to them, it's their children's drawings. They sent the, the little books that were published with all the drawings, with the first and third prizes and all the other essays as well to, they sent the prizes out to their grandparents, to their mothers and aunts. So it was a great idea in terms of um, getting the children involved and also getting the parents more involved because they got to actually buy the books and they ended up fundraising for, for that. And Toyota and Johnson & Johnson basically helped out financially in facilitating and hosting and announcing the winner for that, um, for, for that event. So um, St. Stithians <laughs> said they will also want to, they, they thought it was a great idea in terms of encouraging their, um, their club to have something similar as well as probably a primary school, then it'll also have the early act as well as the, the interact. So yeah. Awesome, is thank you so much, Christine. That is really exciting stuff to see the youth getting involved. Yes. Okay, so um, DJ Stella, was there anybody that got the question wrong? Surprisingly, one person did and he answered A. We had 22 people who responded. <laughs> 21 answered B, which is the correct answer. And one person answered A. What was answer A again? I, I, def I, definitely, I definitely pushed the wrong button. I corrected it later. <laughs> definitely don't I, think it's a I sport. Don't, I don't want to call the name of the person who answered A. <laughs> uh, it was me. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Wrong, so, wrong button. <laughs> yes, it must have I, been the I wrong button. Just, um, we, we just need to speed it up a little bit. Um, okay. Brianna, I might be stealing a few of your minutes um, before we finish, if that's, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. All right, thank you. So the next poll, um, you need to answer A, B, or C, is World Polio Day is A on the 25th of October. B on the 24th of October or C the 26th of October. So while you're answering that poll, can I ask Emmanuel to give um, bring up the person that's going to give feedback from his group? 
Oh, sure thing. Just, just like Christina, we didn't assign anyone, um, but Skumbuzo, Rihanna, Robin, if any of you want to summarize and speak and share a bit about what our group um, shared, please feel free to do so. <laughs> Sorry, Emmanuel, I wasn't listening. You, you, you passing the buck. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm giving the chance to any of you because it, <laughs> it was such a vibrant conversation. Scumbozo was no, no, on. I think, I think you, Mr. Demanio, you, 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 you um, had some very good points yourself as well. So I think you make the uh, contribution. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, Grace, did you, did you clear out the first poll? Is this the second poll on? The second yes. poll is on now, so they need to, okay. in the third box, answer. Okay, okay. A, B, or C. Yeah, all right. Okay, yeah. Manuel, do you want to give us feedback? Because um, everyone has got cold feet in your group. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Um, so we did talk a little bit about um, digital campaigns and, and also like um, ways in, in um, kind of mitigating any conflicts that could come up with vaccinations and community interventions. Uh, we, had, we have a few members who are anti-social media completely. Um, and and mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, the, 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 the devil. We did have um, some conversation around um, policy around vaccination and private schools kind of mandating that students and kids are vaccinated before they're brought in. Um, I think part of the contribution was also just the larger conversation in which tiers are we able to um, create trust. So mentioned a bit about how um, our club in Ghana, we had the polio survivor Rotarian Innocent be part of the We're Just This Close um, campaign, which was a series of billboards, both in the capital and Accra and rural areas. Um, and then because we also have um, various types of vaccinations. So in the case where it's uh, droplets, we have community members within the club and outside Rotary be the ones um, who are trained and able to um, also help deliver um, the vaccinations and to have like social media campaigns, pictures around that. Um, that way then community members are the ones kind of reaching out and, and being able to um, convince people, assuade any, any doubts or any um, kind of like uh, uh, skepticism around vaccination. I think a member also brought up that it's skepticism around vaccination is a larger issue, um, anti-vaccination, -vac and it, it, it goes beyond polio itself to other spaces. So then it's important for us to share ways in which we can mitigate and, and find solutions towards that. Mm -hmm. If I missed anything else, um, there are fantastic folks who could probably pitch in as well. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Um, so DG Stella, the second poll, did we get any wrong answers? Oh, the second poll was fantastic. All 37 participants now answered and all got the answer right, it's B. One, one still got it right or wrong, but redeemed himself very quickly. <laughs> so we had 37 right answers. The answer is 24th awesome. of October. <laughs> so the next poll before we go to the last report back, is polio will be the what disease to be eradicated? A, the second, the, 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 um, this is a human disease, okay? So polio will be the how manyth disease to be eradicated? The second, the first, or the third? So A is second, B is first, C is the third. So um, while you are thinking about that and answering, I'm going to call on um, DGE Stella, who is giving the report back from your group? Uh, Evan is, please. Evan, go ahead, please. Yeah, just to comment, it wasn't a very rotary way I was selected und undemocratically to report back. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is Africa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so our, our brief was to our club members or not, I uh, do not believe that they should be uh, donating money into polio plus at this stage under the COVID-19 situation. Um, and, and that clearly has happened quite a lot with, with, with a lot of clubs. The, the first and, and most important point, I think, is that there's, there's a massive international focus on COVID-19 and, and a lot of international funds from governments and private individuals are coming into COVID-19. So 
You know, there, there's a lot of funding going into COVID in any way, and, and this should not detract from our Polio Plus. <coughs> um, bless you, John. Secondly, um, Rotary money currently being raised is going into the disaster fund and, and not into Polio Plus fund. And we must keep that in mind when, we, when we're talking about Polio Plus and thinking about it as we go forward. Um, another comment made was COVID-19 is, is on the reduction phase now. It's, it's on the downturn. So a lot of funds have already been spent into this to, to create that. And I think we, we can consider that um, reducing any Polio Plus funds to go into COVID-19 wouldn't be the best best choice. Um, COVID-19 and, and, and polio have, have mechanisms for distributing these vac vaccines. So it's important to be kept in mind that both of these mechanisms can be used to distribute these vacu vaccines. It, it can be changed between them. So, you know, reducing polio plus funding wouldn't, wouldn't be smart. Um, just, just some immediate actions within your clubs is, is to keep, keep reiterating polio plus campaigns in future meetings and keep talking about the importance of polio plus on a constant basis at, at the clubs. And, and, you know, we've got to keep in mind, COVID is a short to medium term problem, whereas polio is a long term problem. And, and we're this close. We've got to keep that funding to make sure we, we hit that 100 meter mark. That's it. Thank you very much, Reuben. That was fantastic feedback. And then um, before we finish off, um, we, we're just about um, DJ Stella, um, the answers to the third poll. Uh, 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 we have a problem because the, the answers of the last poll were still on. So there are 37 of us and there's 50 something answers on. I don't think it was, it was cleaned out. So okay. people still write forth. Okay, so, so I don't I know whether this is the, sa is the same. Okay. All right. So if I look at the yeah, chat. We still, we still have the answers of the last poll on, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, so 10, from 10.02 was the, 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 the poll, and there were two people that said B, uh, and the rest said A. So the correct answer is A, polio will be the second disease, a. Be, human disease, to be eradicated. Okay, so for the ones that said um, A, you learned some. May B. I add that, please? Yeah. I, I need to add okay. there because this is very important to the participants. The those who said B, I, it was B the third, third disease. No, that first. Was B. B was the first. Oh, but B was the first. You no, know, but if you said... go to Wikipedia and ask, it will tell you that there are two diseases already eradicated in the world: uh, yeah. smallpox and rinderpest. If you listen to Grace, she said the human disease. You need to know the difference between the human disease eradicated and the other is an animal disease. So it, we are going to be the second polio, the second human disease, but worldwide, the third disease eradicated. Please remember that you might be asked by somebody else. Thank you. Thank you, DG Estella. And in, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do the last poll. I'm just gonna give you the question and the answer. So the last poll would have been the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation contributes how much for every $1 ra Rotary raises for polio eradication? The selection was $5.50 or $2. And of course, the correct answer there is Bill and Melinda Gates gives $2 for every $1 that we raise. And without further ado, I just want to thank my team. Thank you so much. Without you, this would not have been possible. You were all amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for our rotor actors and interactors that attended. And thank you very much to Janine, who stepped up to the plate to tell us about what their Rotary Club is doing. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to your next host, which is Rihanna. Please stay on for the scholarship 